all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. I've been for a walk on a winter's day. I'd be safe and warm if I was in LA. California dreaming on such a winter's day. Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thanks for supporting me by liking and subscribing. It really allows me to continue doing fountain pen reviews for you as I am unsponsored. So thank you very much. Today I'm reviewing a new fountain pen brand for me, Hongdian. I've seen them on Etsy and eBay and I've watched and read the reviews and decided it was time to try one out. Most of the Hongdian styles are slim pens with small nibs and metal sections all the things that fail to float my boat. But I had a solution. I'd buy one as a Christmas gift for my wife. So on Christmas morning, she was delighted to find this, Hongdian 920 under the tree. It is slim, white, and has rose gold hardware. Checking all the boxes for her. Now it is a few weeks past Christmas and I was finally able to spirit it off her desk in order to do a review. So let's check it out right now. <laughs> It is Christmas Eve and I've just finished filming my worst pen experiences of 2020 and I've been to the mailbox after filming and I've got two new packages of pens from China. So it'll be interesting to find out whether these pens will be on next year's list and which list they will be on. Will it be on the best list or the worst list? My guess is that will be somewhere in between. I'm going to open the the biggest of the two even though i think it only has one pen no i know what this is this is a gift a christmas gift which come none too soon here let's open it up so before i get to the gift part of it this is a gift for me rip it open with unbridled avarice. Christmas had come, officially. We plunged into the cornucopia, quivering with desire and the ecstasy of unbridled avarice. Didn't they get a tie this year? This is a zippered pen pouch that holds 12 fountain pens. Lovely. I'm running out of space. But that's a nice size for 12 of my favorite pens. And on to the gift pen. Get it out of its condom. Do a little crinkling for you folks that love that. The tingles up your spine. This is a Christmas gift for my, for my wife, and it has come none too soon. And I'm going to find a nice box for it and wrap it up tonight. But what I liked about it was it's white and rose gold, and it's slim, and I think she'll really like this. This is my first Hongdian. I don't even know whether I'm saying that correctly. Something GT Hongdian. Let's see if it posts. Yeah, and it posts very nicely. Yeah, she's going to love this. So I'll put it in a nice gift box. I've got a few of those. And uh, then, after she's written with it for a bit, I will steal it back from her and do a review. So what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned, as I will talk a little bit about what I like, and what I don't like so much about this pen. First, let me tell you what I know about the Hongdian Pen Company. 
That's it. If you look in the dictionary under the word inscrutable, you'll find their logo. All I know is that they appeared on Etsy and eBay late last year, and from the looks of the photos and some of the chatter on the Fountain Nerd Network, they seem to make some very nice pens. And from my first look at this pen, it is well built and seems to be a quality item. Overall, it is a very slim metal pen with nice lines and very pretty white enamel over brass finish with rose gold colored hardware. From the top, we see a flat top, two-step metal finial, which holds the rose gold colored clip. This must be the Hongdian logo here, and it is a embossed dove with a uh, laurel leaf surround and two stylized letters, H and D. And the H and D pretty obviously stand for Howdy Doody. Let's look at the clip. It is elegantly shaped, but very, very stiff. I'd uh, worry about that catching in a shirt pocket. The metal cap tapers up to about here, where it is straight, until we see a thin rose gold colored cap band that has L dot T Hongdian on one side and 920 the model number on the other. I'll leave the initial LT to your imagination. Let me know in the comments what you think it stands for. There's a very small step down to the barrel which is straight and of the same white enamel until about here where it begins to taper quite sharply to a flat rose gold colored metal end finial that has a really nice chamfer to it at the very end. The cap snaps off to reveal a long tapering section of the same white enamel, a rose gold ring separating the barrel from the section, and a flared rose gold ring at the other end uh, at the end of the section towards the nib. And here is the rose gold colored steel number five size fine nib. It has some really nice filigree work around the outside and then uh, a different kind of Hongdian logo which is a stylized H and D as far as I can make out. Uh, I won't even guess as to the significance of these characters. And then there's an F for fine and there is plastic feed the nib and the feed are friction fit into a collar which unscrews uh, from the section. This looks like a standard number five size steel nib so swapping would actually be fairly easy. However, finding another nib like this in rose gold metal would be a challenge. The section unscrews with some very solid metal on metal threads. And very interestingly, there's a uh, silicone gasket right there. Uh, that's a little guard against uh, spillage, I guess. Uh, don't even think about eyedroppering this. It's all metal. And here's the converter, and it's actually a very nice one. It has some metal reinforcement up here by the nipple. Uh, this plastic body section here is like frosted. That's not just the shimmer of the ink you're seeing there. It actually is frosted. And then there's this uh, metal collar that has Hongdian branding on it. And that collar actually unscrews to allow you to disassemble the converter and clean it out or uh, provide or do some maintenance to it. Very nice. This pen will accept Hongdian cartridges. And interestingly, it will accept a Lamy cartridge as well. Look at that. 
So the Lamy Long actually goes in there very nicely. And even more interestingly, it accepts a Pen BBS converter. Perfect fit. But this is a very nice converter with that metal reinforcement. So it should last a long time and keep from splitting. If we look inside the cap, we see a plastic cap liner that is uh, fixed to the end finial with a Phillips head screw that looks like it's brass. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen wonderfully balanced in the hand. It is very, a very sleek pen posted and uh, quite good looking in the hand as well. When the pen is posted because of this tapering part of the barrel here, the pen strongly reminds me of a Parker Sonnet posted. So here is the Parker Sonnet and here is the Hongbian 920. I see some similarities there, don't you? But I've always admired the Sonnet for how well it balances in the hand and how deeply and nicely it posts. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. If you have medium to small hands or appreciate slim pens, this pen would be wonderful in your hand. I find it borderline uncomfortable to write with as it is even slimmer than that Parker Sonnet. I paid $14.50 for this pen. Shh, don't tell the wife. Shh, be very, very quiet. <laughs> and it comes in either white or black with the same rose gold hardware and your choice of either an extra fine or a fine nib. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Hongdian 920 and with a, the aforementioned Parker Sonnet, a Pilot Metropolitan, a Wingsong 601 Flighter, and a Schaefer Targa. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, and as you can see, all five of them post beautifully. And they have strong similarity between the Hongdian and the Parker Sonnet. And interesting that the Sonnet, even though it's a longer pen when capped, when posted, it's even shorter than the Hongdian. But the Hongdian is just about as slim as the Targa, which is a very slim fountain pen. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Hongdian nine twenty and it has a fine steel nib. And the ink today is diamine jack frost let's check the wetness this pen is extremely wet and here is the swatch for jack frost it has uh, aquamarine turquoise kind of blue with a lot of red sheen and a touch of silver shimmer when asked for something sparkly and blue. And here is some Robert Oster Fire and Ice and along with some J. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal. Uh, the Robert Oster Fire and Ice is a lot greener, more emerald uh, color and has a lot of really good nice red sheen to it. Uh, the uh, Kyanite du Nepal has a touch of red sheen, is an aquamarine 
turquoisey kind of blue to deep blue uh, with a lot of silver shimmer. As to line variation, well, there isn't any. It's this very stiff, very stiff steel nib. And comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.4 millimeters, which is a Western extra fine and a Japanese fine. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, you know, it writes, but boy, it's like writing with a sewing machine needle. And some quick writing. No problems keeping up whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well the things that I dislike about this pen come from my own personal preferences and none are from any inadequacies of how the pen is designed or built. In fact this is a beautiful looking fine quality fountain pen. My grievances are mostly about the nib which is very fine uh, and it's advertised to be. It's not the smoothest experience, although it is very nicely wet. It's uh, laying down a lot of ink here and you can probably see some sheening happening from the Jack Frost, which is very nice. I'm very pleased because Wynn wanted something like that. But uh, this nib I, is uh, a little bit too uncontrolled for me and that's just because I don't really like uh, fine nibs. Another complaint I have about the pen is that this clip is very, very stiff. It's almost unusable, but I doubt that uh, she'll be putting that in her shirt pocket. I must credit the design of this pen, however, how the barrel tapers so substantially right here to allow that cap to post so nicely. It ends up being a very nice size and a very nice weight. This is not a light pen, but it's no, by no means heavy at all. This is a lot of pen for only $14.50, I must say. Give me a break. I couldn't be more excited, I must say. This anticipation, it's making me mental. Well, now I can get it back on her desk. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.